Welcome to a podcast unlike any other. Presented by the Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame. In support of our local music scene. It's the Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast. Tonight's guests, Hunter Eichelberger and Chris Clay. And Devix. This episode is sponsored by Members First. And now, your hosts, Daniel Kime and Alan McCutcheon. Hello and welcome to the Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast. I am your host, Daniel. And I'm your other host, Alan. And this week we have me and me. <laughs> and this is why we put them behind the camera because they obviously suck at that. Yeah, they're Get not, back they're not there, good nerds. with the mic in the hands. He's holding it like an ice cream cone. <laughs> We're, you're Point supposed it. to. That's the, the rule. They can't That's hear you. Tell everybody else. <laughs> so for everyone that is wondering and who has not had the pleasure of meeting us in person and has been just a viewer, we have our director, Hunter, and our senior producer, Chris. So they're the ones that make the magic happen that you guys get to see, uh, what is it, like every two weeks? Every two weeks. Every two weeks we put out content. So Until this episode and then. Yeah, and th- now we're, we're done now. We never know. And so then sometime continue. in the future. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Please enjoy as we ask them a bunch of questions that we already know the answer to, but you don't. But this but is for you. Please so. watch this episode. Hunter, Chris, <laughs> how did you guys get into the positions that you are with the Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast and Darker with Daniel? Ooh, okay. I mean, um, I can let Chris start with this. No, uh, that's all right. You, <laughs> no. Well, this is why we stay back there. Yeah. The other side of this. Um, Chris was here before I was, but um, it is literally just from Dark with Daniel and then kind of rolled into this because of Brandon. Yeah. Um, just kind of ideas and moving forward with the music scene and Brandon seemed very interested after he came on an episode and presented it as a kind of a baby idea that he was throwing around and it turned into this pretty quickly. Um, the whole set was kind of just like thrown together, but yeah, I think it we came mean that in a good way. Yeah, right. I think it came together like way quicker as, than we as all expected. Thrown together meaning like piece by piece, not like hastily but we didn't just throw a bunch of stuff and try to make a look good we, right. there was some thought behind it this is brandon's baby this is his favorite thing on the set it's also my favorite thing on the and set um, thing on furniture the set. was Aside all his choice three. um very good choice thank you yeah um it wasn't my idea but take but uh other than that uh if we go all the way back to dark with daniel um when we were doing it at rock mill shout out rock mill it's um close. chris was a part of it who i didn't know super well at the time i had known of you for a very long time through other people. Um, but you heard a million that st- well back then? We knew, I knew of Hunter it. through stories that I would hear from you, like crazy stories. Yeah. Uh, like that time. Like all the time. Yeah. And, and then kind of the same for Chris. I would hear from you or from people in the same friend group. I knew your name, obviously. Um, you guys had met before, though, like oh, maybe yeah, once or twice. For sure. Probably yeah. a dozen times. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't think I ever really talked to you prior no. to that. Not extensively, anyway. Um, but I came and sat in on an episode, one of the first few episodes mm-hmm. that were recorded at Rock Mill, and Danny was like, do you want to come back and continue to be a part of this? And that's how I ended up here. The funny know. part about that is, though, too, is because like I never met you, yeah. and I didn't hear stories <laughs> about it. Because like me and Danny, we were, we knew each other. We we hung out before, like in the past, but then we kind of just both went off. We had our own life. I paths. would say our relationship uh, prior to Darker with Daniel was Hunter and Chris's, like equal to almost Hunter and Chris's yeah. relationship. We have known each other a little bit better than they knew each yeah. other, but you know. But uh, so like we we, but then I, I was part of Darker with Daniel. We already did all that and everything. And uh, I remember he brought Hunter. I was like, who the f- who the hell is Hunter? I was like, and then uh, he, like we saw you there, like sitting on the episode, mm. and then like the next day, Danny was like, yeah, he's like, so like Hunter's gonna be joining like the podcast as like the fourth person, and like me, like not that I was like trying to be like ignorant or anything, but I was just like, I was like, 
why? Like, yeah, but you already, were like, this is our group. Yeah, I was like, it's yeah. already working. Like, why do we need him? And I'm just going to say this. Like, I'm so <laughs> glad you joined the podcast because, like, I very quickly realized, like, if you need to know something, you Should ask I? Hunter. Yeah. Like, Hunter just like, can recall, like, essentially like, anything he's ever read. And he's been, like, our go-to for, I mean, when we they talk about, like, legal stuff. I mean, both you and Chris. like But, like, it's, like, if, like, Chris doesn't know, Hunter knows the answer to that. And if, like, Hunter doesn't know the answer to that one, Chris knows the answer to that. But I was just, like. Or I'll find was, out. Dude, yeah, I was going to yeah. say, if they don't know the answer, they'll find out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I was just, like, oh, my God. So, like, and it, now it just, I mean, it just feels weird to even think that you weren't part of it at yeah. one point. So, it's, like. This is like the core group. So uh, to we, this day, we brought you in like what the third episode of Darker with Daniel. It wasn't yeah, it was early February 2020. Yeah, we started in January. Yeah. So yeah, it was like we brought you on just to go I, on quarantine I, with with COVID. I think there, oh I God. I want to say it was like you had we had posted two or three episodes prior to you officially joining prior to me being a part of it. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. I don't remember the yeah. one I sat in on was probably like the second or third episode filming. Oh, okay, I got you. Was that the candle episode? No, no. The candle was... episode I was actually like deeply a part of. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So but it was prior to that. I don't remember the first one that I sat in on, to be honest. I just remember, I mean, it was so early on into the show, and everything was moving smoothly, but yeah. like, I, if you don't already know, Hunter and I go way back. We've been best friends since we were probably nine or ten years old. Yeah. Um, like and pre-teenagers. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely pre-teenagers. Um, and... Hunter and I, like, you know, after high school, we kind of, we, I wouldn't say g- went our separate ways, but, like, you know. Just moved apart. Yeah. Literally we moved, moved apart. Literally, yeah. yeah. I moved uh, away. He moved, not really. Well, he did move away. No, you didn't. No. No. You, well, I moved <laughs> no. away, but we still we still hung out every once in a while, and then Hunter moved closer to me, like, right then, pretty much, or shortly, well, like, a year before then, maybe. Yeah, end of 2019. Yeah. Yeah, no, so you had just moved yep. there, yeah. So um, yeah, probably like I was like, man, this would be a great that. way to like hang out with Hunter. Tell, uh, I told him to come check it out. And uh, I was just like, man, Hunter is a guy you want on your team no matter what. I know it's certainly not going to hurt us. So I was just like, hey, do you want to be a part of this? And uh, like Alan, like you were saying, you're like, why do we need a fourth guy? And like, obviously we all yeah, know yeah, it yeah. now. But like, I'm like, Alan... Trust me, I'm making an executive decision. <laughs> yeah, because that was like we're not first, gonna regret that. That was yeah. the first time that you were just like because we any any other decision we did for that we had votes between the three of us. Yep. And it was the first first and only time that you were like, Hey, he's part of the team and I was like we didn't even like discuss it and you're like, He's part of the team and I was like uh, I mean like okay, like what and I had the same mentality. It's like I didn't know him, but I was like, Okay, like a fourth person will just help alleviate like the workload, yep. if anything. Um but I mean, there's a reason why, like, you're the director, and that's now. and <laughs> like, that's the thing. So it started out with you allevi- alleviating some of Chris's responsibilities with, yeah, you know, like with, just technical responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, just being a hand, helping them set up. I mean, Chris, what are some of the things that Hunter helped you out with to start? Oh with? man, well, I'm sitting here thinking about back when everything started. But um, I mean, as soon as as soon as Hunter came on, um, I mean, you took like half of everything and, and our and setup there was involved too um so yeah it was and a like, tear down and well, set up every time kind of deal we were so. also trying to like go back to the drawing board on like how are we going to do this moving forward because it was a it was time to progress yeah. as a podcast so like, I mean, it was almost immediately yeah. we we got new equipment um and we just like well we went to the drawing board and we we're like this is what we need this is what we need right. and you guys have always been like you know are we sure that we need that, you know, this and that? We'll, like, be like, this is why we need it. And yeah. then, boom, you know, we just make it all happen. Yeah. Yep. It works we really well. we trust you guys. Rightfully so. Like, I know I need the microphone. That's about, that's where my <laughs> technical knowledge extends I don't know uh, what microphone, to. and I don't know why. Yeah. Um, but, no, seriously, I mean, to the viewers listening and people listening, um, I mean, this, this would not be at all possible without Hunter and Chris. Uh, I mean, Alan and I were just two uh, slightly pretty faces just sitting here talking about stuff that you guys want to hear about. Uh, I'll take it, it. it. It's all these guys <laughs> o- over here, honestly. Um, Thank you. Chris, where did you start getting into film and production and everything? Ooh, that's tough. Um, was it Hershey? Well, kind was of. It, um, it was like way before that. Um, I kind of got into it when... I was doing the band actually um, because I wanted to, 
I was already into it, had an interest in it, but I wanted to get into it to do a couple music videos. Um, ended up, took a really long time to get the opportunity to put all the heads together and all the people and make everything happen and actually film one. Um, and we did it for my band Imperialist. Um, but that oh, yeah. was still, it was kind of years before that, I guess it kind of all started when I had a friend, uh, Ken and Fletcher, um, he did like the original attack attack, uh, video shoot that happened in Harrisburg at champ. That, that champ. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I can't even think he did a whole bunch of local bands. If, if you were a local band, you had a good music video. It was at the time it was produced by him. Yeah. Um, and this was early on and. I kind of always had an interest, always stayed in it, and kind of kept up with things, but never had the time to do it until we sort of went into like this. Recreationally. Right. Least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and you were pretty much always in a band leading up until you joined Darker with Daniel. Yeah, I was kind of always preoccupied well, we with Darker. the music side yeah. of things. But, um, you know, I, I worked with Logan and Hershey on a bunch of different projects, um, doing some, like, filming for you know, things that they were doing or just helping out uh, yeah. while somebody else was filming stuff. Um, I spent a lot of time at that studio. Uh, it's funny, I think, how much a part of not only this, but even just the precursor to this, they were like... Right, right. They were, oh, I mean, yeah. they were they were a big part of it. And when we actually had Logan on that episode uh, at your house when the podcast used to yeah. be there, and oh, that was yeah. when we kind of like went into the... The first big move was to Rock Mill. Yep. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that was, I don't know how long we were there before we brought you on the team, but it wasn't very, very long. Very short. Because I think the, pictures, almost right you, away. the pictures of you guys making the tables. Yeah. Well, was I guess. Shortly before, right? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Shortly guess, before Rock Mill, at least. Yeah. So I guess to give a little bit of a timeline. Yeah. Um, mm -mm. Or was that after you guys were already planning to start there? The tables we started to make as it soon was as kind we of like a simultaneous we, project. We, yeah, yeah, we, we, we worked out our like, here's, rock the, mill. here's the space. Now yes. we're gonna yeah, okay. right. Yeah, right. we we built the tables to move over there. So it's kind of like we did yeah. here. We were like, here's the space. Okay, now we have to figure out what we want to put in it. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. How do we make the space right. the space? So so darker with Daniel started in 2018, and Chris, I want to say it was what Yumi and Booker, and we rec recorded like three episodes or so. And um, then we stopped and you've probably heard this story before. And then um, you and I did like another one or two episodes. <clears throat> and then we had no, we had we did another episode that we had Alan on. That was the first episode we did back. Right. We did that, that episode with Alan. We released it, actually got a little bit of traction to it. And we were like, cool, let's get Logan on. So we had Logan on. And this was in what? Uh, probably Oof. November, December of 2019, 2019. Mm -hmm. Yeah. November. I want to say it was November of 2019. Sure. Um, yeah. I'm terrible at dates, man. No, so it makes sense. Cause then we had him on and that's when he was, I want to say, I, I want to say graciously, like he was impressed with mm -hmm. what we were doing. And that's when he was like, Hey, like, I think this is something that you could definitely bring to the rock mill family. And I think the rock mill family and the incorporation there can help. And so we're like, yeah, sure. And then, we we joined and we officially signed our lease there and everything in January and then that's when you know the, the thing that we always bring up and yeah. every we're just tired of talking about yeah. COVID it's when COVID hit and then that was just kind of uh, we just had to ride that part out and then we came back um, to Rock Mill and then that's when we really started doing like the thick of our Rock Mill interviews yeah. was after that then yeah and i think a huge shout out not only to rock mill but logan specifically he really has that brain of like absolutely hey this is cool i think you could bring that here and like harbor it here but he's not like he's really not greedy about it which is awesome no he, he's like it like whenever you're ready like whenever you've outgrown this like don't feel bad do whatever you gotta do i mean i know he has bands that use that gig practice room oh, yeah. where we were recording in that eventually kind of go like we should be doing this somewhere else yep like no no offense to rock mill like we they go somewhere else and and logan is just so nice about it it was definitely like um, a necessary step though because it was like it was really cool to go from like i mean there's no disrespect going from no. like your guest bedroom yeah. to then like we would have yeah, guests yeah, yeah. on and it's like you were walking into like right. a legitimate sound stage not only with, like, are you rolling not only are you pulling up to a studio mm -hmm. but you're going into a room that's decked out that's like where people record i mean 
not to throw out a name, but Small Town Titans literally recorded music videos that they produced yep. and and yep. put out there I, in that same room. I think a funny a funny thought I just had, uh, something I thought of. I remember back whenever we were just starting at Rock Mill, us using the phrase "fake it till we make it," and like we didn't realize like we weren't even faking it anymore. Right. We yeah. were actually making it. Yeah. And, like not gonna sit here and act like we were huge or big. I mean, we don't have no. a ton of views on that, but like we were like, no, wait, we're actually making this right now. People are coming in and being like. Oh my God, this right. is impressive. And I'm and like, actually, really? And you're actually producing content. Yeah. Yeah. Ver- versus like just kind of recording some audio and then throwing it out there. It was like yep. an actual production mm-hmm. start to finish. And then it was released as like a final, like, here's an episode, like a sculpted, yeah. ready to post episode, not just like, here's some audio I recorded on my phone yep. and threw an intro on. When, when would we say, when did we actually transition? into like the music podcast because like i i mean we all know when we when you started dark with daniel i mean it was supposed to be and not saying that it's not coming back that's in the works um but like the original original idea was like oh it's gonna be like dark humor kind of edgy yada 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 and we we had a couple episodes that were like that but then like we just i i feel like it was like almost like overnight we just started i, I mean i know it was thanks to um uh, what's what's his name? Um, Patty. No, not Patty. Um, uh, oh, his. Uh, we had his stepfather on as well. Oh, oh. Uh, I mean, that wasn't really the dark humor. Uh, that no. was that was just dark topics. He's talking about the music. Yeah, yeah the music. Yeah. He's talking who, about the music influence. Who, oh, like, I'm, who, I'm sorry for forgetting. Oh, 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 oh. Gotcha, Brett. Brett. Okay, so I was right. I just i I thought it was wrong for whatever reason. So Brett, we had Brett on, and I feel like it was like after that. We just started getting like more and more attention from like musicians, and like we're all yep. prior musicians, so yeah. we were like, "Yeah." You're like, talking about Brett Rutter. Yeah, Brett. I mean, we'll exactly. shout him out. Like, yeah, I, absolutely. He's he. It doesn't live here anymore, but he is awesome and was massive in not only growing the music scene here, but like making open mic availability yeah. huge. Well, he's also um, either on the advisory committee or the board of directors for the yeah. Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame as well. Brett's an awesome guy. I've known him, uh, geez, almost as long as I've known Hunter. Actually. That's awesome. Yeah. We go way back. Just super selfless guy. Yep. Like, super just, nice. Just awesome. Very, very helpful for everybody. And also, I guess he's traveling here. He doesn't live that far from here, but no. I'm very surprised we go to an event and he's there. I'm like, what are you doing here? Yeah. Where's your family? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But I think he was, I think he it truly was that cares. point that like, kind of like hard steered us towards the musician side yeah. of things and it was like and also the rock sense. mill influence yeah exactly like, yeah. your availability there yep. is like all musicians yeah so it just made sense and it was like it just it felt like and all of us having right. a, all of us having a past in music mm-hmm. it just right. really made sense to really morph into that yeah. um and, uh, and now uh, we're doing a music podcast uh, exactly yeah. and now we're doing a music <laughs> podcast and I guess to kind of segue, I mean, I guess we, we've kind of talked about Dark with Daniel a lot, which is, of course, a part of the you know, yeah. you guys' story here. Mm-hmm. The foundation. I, yeah, the foundation of the story. But I do also want to talk about you guys a little bit more. Um, so what made you guys want to do this with us and what made you guys want to stay? I mean, we've gone through some hard times over the years. We felt sorry it? for you guys. <laughs> this is all sympathy. Makes sense. Uh, you knew we I, couldn't do it yeah. without you. Um, <laughs> Darn it! They I were appreciate right. your charity. I mean, I I also <laughs> grew up having an interest in videography and audio, and I mean, I, you know, we made stupid videos as a kid. Oh, like, we made so many. It was a big videos. mistake, if, wasn't it? I, like as soon as I had a camera available to me, I was like, "All right, Windows Movie Maker," just yep. like cutting things together, putting audio over certain parts of it, and Bass transitions. With Nerf shotguns. Yep. Good times. Thistles. Yeah, I had um, an interest in video, and I fully th- regret this, it. Thistles. <laughs> because it led you oh here? Oh, my God. It led me here. <laughs> that video still Sorry. exists somewhere. Oh. I think it's on Facebook or something. Oh God. The two of us Delete it. beating a stuffed fish with a bat. But I feel like, so, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like our generation, like, it's like when we were kids, the moment we got, like, a camera in hands, I was like, well, I was like, we're going to be the next jackass. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's just, it, it, that was just like the natural order. Or you were like, like, this is just going to be on television at some point. At some yeah. point, yeah. it's, it's going to be. Right. Like, here's, I'm the one that's going to be famous. Here's me wrecking my bike, and then I'll well, just be famous. Yep. You, you kind of were. I don't know if you guys know about this, but so back when there was a thing called Vine, oh, Jesus. can't go on it anymore, but I promise you, he, w- he, was, he was at least a local celebrity on Vine. <laughs> 
I had some good ones. I had some hitters, you know. I I helped put a couple of them together with well, you. You did. I I actually did have a couple of people come up to me. They were like, "Hey, are you so and so from Vine?" I'm like, "Ah, don't say that. That's awesome. <laughs> that sounds awful." Honestly, yeah. that Vine is, needs to come back. I was gonna say that's a, that's like a missing hole in content, dude. I, I, it had none of the terrible points of. You had six seconds to be funny. Yeah, like that was it. If you were not funny in six seconds, you know what though? I, my favorite thing to do on a Friday night kickback, you know, kickback when you have like four or five friends over, you're just hanging out on the couch drinking beers, is watch Vine compilations. Vine compilations, yeah. dude. The four hour long ones. You get in the, yeah. yeah. You know so what good. though? Wow. Right at the tail end, you had a lot of people trying really hard to be funny and they weren't. Yeah. So it's kind of like sounds like it was sort of a now. bittersweet and kind of like needed to happen. End. You know. Yeah. I yeah. definitely think the platform kind of outgrew itself. Yeah, where it couldn't really support all of the people that were there. But anyway, that's in the off, world was off evolving. topic. Shout yeah. out Vine. Yeah, we miss you. We do. R.I.P. Uh, um, so, uh, coming back to, um, I was saying videography, audio. Um, I also messed around with. As soon as I had a computer that was capable of doing it, I had Audacity. I was cutting audio audacity. together. I was covering songs and was ridiculous stuff, stuff that never got posted anywhere. Um, Same. Learned how to use you the G Snap plugin, which was like old auto tune when like T Pain was so famous, and people were like, if I could auto tune, I would be famous. <laughs> uh, learned how to do that. So I just kind of grew up like anything I could record, I was recording. Trying to make YouTube channels, he trying to post stuff. Also, like, such a good photo editor. His uh, family definitely thought he died a couple times on the <laughs> internet. I remember that. Wait, what? Posting pictures of you with blood, like blood droplets coming out of your chest and stuff. Somebody people, thought Hunter murdered me because people he posted get a, an, a very obviously edited picture of right. me with like blood on my chest, and then somebody was like, and, like his Did skin Hunter kill was, somebody?" His skin was like grayed out. It was yeah. <laughs> I was doing all kinds of stuff though, like taking pictures this of myself. Like 2006. With, okay. Taking pictures of myself with my arms in different orientations, and then putting all of my arms from that, from those pictures, on one picture. Like stupid stuff. I mean, I was like young. Yeah. With a camera and a computer, so. It was my, just like it, you were, you weren't mattered. You weren't concerned with if you should. Yeah. You were more concerned with if you could. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Then I learned you could like I used GIMP photo editor still to this day it's free it's amazing um i use that to make pictures with like lightsabers but i mean you could do pretty much anything with that program that you could do in photoshop it's just you know which learning curve do you want that's true so, yeah that's true I, th um, I think i started in photoshop too i uh when i was in school we had uh like a computer lab everybody we like we had a bunch of computer labs but we had one in particular that was just a like it was just for like graphic stuff mm -hmm. so i had like all the macs with photoshop and i remember they were like teaching us how to like go in and like fix you know fix this like, like blemish a blemish and, and yeah. take it out and yeah. while the teacher's like giving their Clone whole tool. spiel about that i'm like over here like adding ridiculous things to the photo and like everybody like is like whoa you're like taking stuff out of the real. background <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like adding stuff, um, you know, I guess that's kind of really where I started because when I realized you could do that uh, and then I when I found an interest in propaganda and creating it, <laughs> um, no, <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, that's kind of I think where it started for me, too. I just remember how excited I would be when I could find a new way to do something like the fact that you could leave the same camera angle, record two different videos, and then splice them in the middle. I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. In in Movie Maker. And then you could have it literally look like there's two of you in the room spliced together in the middle with two completely different videos. You just have to make sure the lighting doesn't change in between. But I was just like, this is awesome. Like, I could make a full-length movie. With just yourself. With just me. Playing like, different characters. Yeah, I definitely couldn't have, but... And I was shooting it on like a, it was literally like a point and shoot. Like you turn it on and the lens goes. E <laughs> the red Nikon. Um, I honestly, I think it was a Samsung. Yeah, it was probably like 3.1 megapixels or something uh, crazy. Hunter would walk around in his, cargo sh in his cargo shorts and he'd have a digital camera <laughs> in one pocket and a Zoom in the other. It's awesome. And it's usually Hunter, a, a giant bag of candy were like in one of them Zoom as well. people because yeah. like. I have iPhone now, but I mean, there was a rumor that Zune was going to make a reemergence with a Zune phone, and I was 
all for it because like I was a Zune person so as well. So I think that Microsoft learned their lesson with trying to make phones. I don't think that they're going to try again. No, unfortunately. But like, yeah. I was like, dude, a Zune phone, absolutely. Like, I'm here for it. Like, Windows Phone was such a good idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's real good. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard that was terrible. Speaking of phones. Uh, God, I ran into one of my buddies the other day, and he has the new uh, flip phone uh, smartphone. Yeah. Uh, the Z Razor. Fold or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah. He has the new Razor, and it's sitting there in the bar. And I'm like, did you bring a Game Boy SP to the bar? <laughs> He's like, what? No, it's my phone. Anyway, sorry. Side, funny side note. We're getting old. Um, so that makes no sense to me, though. That like, why would you want? Why would you want to take your smart? Like, you're not gaining a bigger phone. You're just folding your smartphone in half. That so doesn't make any because, sense to me. I mean, everyone is now doing like the whole this is like, like social this media is like presence and like new recording retro. and selfies is like is good. You, you can, can now prop like it up like half. It and you can see what you're doing. So you can't while just it's put filming. a kickstand co- uh, case on the, your existing phone. Listen, yeah. man, where there's a need. Money can fix it, and you can always extort money out of the need. I just don't understand. It's like yeah. taking it's like taking a bifold wallet and yeah. putting all your stuff in a trifold wallet. Like you make it a little bit skinnier, but now it's tall. Yeah, I don't exactly. understand why you'd want to put this thing that's twice as thick as your phone. In your, anyway, it, that's it a, completely off topic of what yeah. we were talking yeah. about. But back back to the topic. So, looking at where we started and looking at where we're at now, is there anything you guys would have done differently? Probably not, wouldn't have joined, huh? Like, not, not spent the majority of my time making sure that you guys don't look as stupid as you are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're good at that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're real good at uh, making uh, unusable content until you get the content that you get. Um, there's a lot of outtakes that happen and a lot of cuts that happen um, or restarts, um, and that's Yeah, I mean, there, there's guys. probably like 25 minutes just prior to what we're recording now, yeah. so... Um, anything I would have done different? The answer better be no, because we're perfect. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe specific bookings, like when we were at Rock Mill, maybe like really pushing to get some of the bigger names that we had at least some connection with there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I think that would that probably would have really helped us. We um, uh, I think we left too much room for opportunity or not not enough room for opportunity I'm well sorry. and also we were new it, this is like this is not a we were not professionals no I'm definitely not a professional at booking in, by any means so people definitely think like we're just four are. guys that have full-time jobs that like, right. just enjoy doing a podcast so, like we're so learning as we go busy, yeah. yeah busy you feel a little yeah. you feel a little timid in asking like a big band like hey we record in the same space would you like to be on our podcast that has no viewers it's like i They'd probably rather waste their time doing something else. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. Agree. And thank I, you to all the bands that gave us. Yeah, your like time. I, I don't yeah. think that any of you actually would have been like that. But that's what you're kind of thinking is like, I don't want to waste your from time. a naive standpoint. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to waste your time coming on here, and you're just like, why am I here? Yeah, I so I think, kind of to add to that, there's like which an, is funny because now we're doing a podcast where literally, literally, people are coming to us like, yeah. hey, can we come on? I think kind of like it's a little bit different but sort of to add to that you said what um what would we have done different um but one thing i don't know that it's something that i would do different but something that i wish i would have realized is the momentum that what we do um or what we do the momentum that it can gain after right the after the work's been done yeah because i think a lot of times we put something out there and, and even sometimes we do an episode um, where like, you know, we have somebody that like maybe we all, you know, off or on camera asked questions to that guest that we were like, oh, man, like that was really cool. Like we wish we could continue that and whatnot. Uh, and we kind of have like this sort of feeling where we're like, oh, like I feel like that episode just you know, not that there was anything wrong with the guest or anything, but I felt yeah. like that one wasn't like a good episode and right. it ends up having way more views than one that you know that you, we that you think was park. really good yeah. right and yeah. i think i think we sometimes underestimate uh the potential that something has for yeah. the growth yeah um and, and you also can get discouraged by that as well where right. you're like here's this amazing episode this is gonna have to do so well because that not great episode did really well yeah and it ends up just not being that the case so, yeah and that's i mean this is kind of like that too like if 
if you have a big name on, that does not guarantee no. that you're going to have views. But someone vocal that maybe is not as big can spread that to way more people that actually want to sit and watch it. Absolutely. I and mean, at the end of the day, I think as long as we have a good time, um, I'll do it again. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's like, I don't care necessarily how great you are at talking. I don't care how many views you bring me. If we get to sit down and have a productive conversation, mm -hmm. that's good enough for me. Yeah, I just want to, like, we really, I mean, our view is important for uh, something that we post on YouTube. I mean, sure, anyone that uses YouTube as a platform, views matter because it drives certain things. But, like, us personally, like, we're not doing this for the views. We're not doing this for, like, we do this for free because we enjoy doing this. This is something that we genuinely enjoy doing. And, like, I just got to say, like, to piggyback off what you were saying, it's like, oh, like, I wish we would have taken, like, certain opportunities yeah. to, like, try to connect with some of those bands that we were sh kind of sharing space with. I, I agree 100%. Like, at the time, like, we had the, naiv the naivety that, like, like maybe Nativity. they would feel that way. It's a word. Look it up. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> Look it up. Um, but, like, now, like, after doing what we've done and sitting down with some of the yeah. bands that we've gotten to sit down with, like, like we sat down with... Um, August Burns Red. August Burns Red. Brett Michaels, Brett Michaels. From Ashes to New. From Ashes to yeah. New. The Menzingers. Menzingers. Like, I think we learned very quickly... Like, they're they're just people. Yep. Yeah. Like and as long as you come with good energy and a good attitude, they're gonna match that. And, and it's and like, they're excited to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Knowing nothing about you, no yeah. having no idea who you are. Exactly. And we're I'm just I'm grateful for all the opportunities we had. I'm and not even them. Like I just want to preface this. Like, am I grateful that I got to sit down with some of those like legendary like icons? Absolutely. But like I've also had just as good conversations with some of the local actors like like every episode we did with this podcast with with the CPMP was just like a true joy. Yeah. Like especially the youth music conference or the youth youth music showcase. That was awesome. That was great. Like yeah. Seen like th I think that was probably one of the like the best episodes like experience wise that I got to do because like it was just so cool to see like all of the talent that's coming up in the next generation mm -hmm. and it just it really does make you feel good because you're like. Like the music scene's gonna be fine. Yeah, like right. the, we've we've got some talented people coming up, and that was just I, I'll be honest. Like it was not the one that I was expecting to like really like yeah. weigh on my heart like like a lot like heavy, mm -hmm, heavily. Mm -hmm. But like I loved doing that. Like meeting all those kids and like and it, the and the reactions to that yeah from the parents or friends of parents or the friends of the kid. Like it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. it was. It really was. It, it really it kind of grounded me i think a little bit like brought me down to the level of like what you're doing makes a difference and matters yeah um and, and not and not every episode has to be brett michaels no. yeah exactly it doesn't have to be a national to be good. act it doesn't yeah. have right. to be a hot local yeah. band just getting it you know giving that 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 i don't want to, that uh young musician the opportunity yeah. to get yeah. out there and talk about themselves and to promote themselves. Uh, it's if you didn't watch that episode it, at one point, me and Alan said it like we didn't have that opportunity. When yeah, we yeah, were, yeah. When we were that age yep. and yep. when we were musicians trying to make it, like yeah. it, it was great to give them any sort of uh, upper, you know, any sort of free marketing. Yes, there we go. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Uh, yeah. No cost to you. Exactly, Chris. You looked like you wanted to say something. Uh, you know, I've just um, I, I was thinking about how. You know, you had asked earlier, um, and it kind of ties into what you're saying now, but you had asked earlier about, like, where, where I sort of started, and I, you know, Hunter was explaining how he started. I was explaining how I started uh, getting involved in video and whatnot before this. Uh, but I realize now more... Like just this second or well, no, no. Re recently? I, I, I realize now, like, you know, even coming in here, it's a platform that fits... Yeah. I think yeah, for yeah, us, yeah. in different ways, even though Hunter and I aren't on camera, I talk to like yeah. everybody that we have on here. That's the really cool camera. part is we probably talk to these people three or four times as much not on camera. Yeah, And, and I think the, the thing about a podcast platform, or at least the experience that I think we all share with this, yeah. uh, and, and also with C, uh, the central pennsylvania music hall of fame is that it's it hasn't been just this is just something we do but like right. i think we've all also grown from it in a way because we always have something to take away at the end of the day yeah. from every everybody time. we talk to it, there's more of a connection in the podcasting for sure uh and doing this show 
than I think I've been able to have with anybody in projects that I was involved in. Now, I mean, music, it's a totally different thing. Like we had, we had our family and we were, and we were like cranking stuff out. Like you said, you know, it's not quite apples to apples, but right. And, and you could connect with people who liked similar stuff or liked your stuff, but it wasn't the same. You do, you weren't, you weren't mutually sort of meeting in the middle on something. Yeah. Right. You know, it was, um, and I kind of hate to say that. I, I feel like that's not the best way to put it, but like, no, no, it makes perfect it, sense in this. It's like, everybody's really just there to have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Agree, disagree. It's all good. We're there to have a conversation and, um, it, I don't know. I always take something away at the end of the day. And the I think, be balanced. I think that's yeah. why I, Rather I than like, it be like one where I'm at right there. What you just said is something to take away. What do you think is the biggest things you have taken away? Uh, I guess a question I think we should all maybe go in a circle and say, what do you think is one of the biggest things that you have taken away from doing this, these shows, uh, doing this project as a whole and has helped you grow as a person? What does it take away that's attributed to that? That's a very good question. It's a loaded question. You don't have to go in order. If Hunter, you're ready, go for yeah. it. Yeah, uh, it made me. F- I mean, I I have my answer. Like I'm ready. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. It, it just made me fall in love with the music scene, like all over again. Honestly, like because like I had like me and Chris, we were literally in the music scene at the exact same time. We were in the exact same scene at the exact same time. So we we know what that scene was like. And like you said, dude, it's a rush. Like it's. Yeah. Writing and performing music is its total own different thing. It is not apples to apples, like you said, Danny. It's apples to oranges. But I will say, like, I thought I was, like, involved in the music scene when I was part of the music scene, when I was an active um, provider in the scene. But I've got to be honest. Like, I think, like, I'm, I'm much more invested and much more involved in the music scene now because, like, I don't have to stay in a box. And like mm-hmm. at the time when I was writing music, I really felt like I had to fit in this one box. And like you, this, you get to like appreciate it from the outside. I get now. to appreciate yeah. everything, to, to the people. every yeah. genre, every type of person. Yep. And it's like, and I have to, like, it's like, it's not like, Oh, you should. It's like, no, I have to, to be in this position. And it pushed me out of my comfort zones with like certain genres, certain things. And like, I am super grateful to have like been put in this position to explore the music scene in the local area in such a deeper level and like actually connect with every single person. Cause I'm going to tell you right now, if I would have kept just doing the music that I was doing, would I have been happy? I mean, I might've been who knows, but I guarantee you, I would not have met half the people that I met doing that, that I have doing this podcast. Yeah. And like some of these people that we've met, have just been truly incredible. So like that, that is my biggest takeaway. It, it made me refall in love with the music scene in a different way than I did originally. I love that. I love that. I, I would agree because, I mean, leading up to this, I didn't really go to a lot of uh, live music uh, for a little while, not for any specific reason, just life's busy. And, like, now I've had three people ask me this week, like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? What concert are you going to since you go to one every weekend now? Like, I've been to a concert every weekend for the last month and a half, um, or every week at least. Um, sorry, Hunter, go ahead. I know you had an answer. Um, I think really the biggest takeaway recording here i mean it happened at rock mill too but recording yeah. here specifically just bands is how humbled you are by people not only being excited to be here and i, I don't know uh, this probably comes through on camera i'm sure you guys have talked about it but like people show up here and this is completely they have no idea what they're walking into yep. they've never been here before they walk in through a side door and then they just get to have the whole experience start to finish. Yep. So, like, it's not a sterile environment. We're not at a sound stage somewhere where it's kind of like you feel in your comfort zone. Like, this is this is not somewhere where you record music. So no. you're not walking in somewhere where you go like, oh, okay, so, we're, you know, there's a stage and we're going to be in the green room, whatever. Um, but it's very humbling that people come in here not only excited, but they want to talk to you. Yeah. And they really don't want to talk about themselves. Like, Getting to make someone, uh, having to make someone talk about themselves on camera when they don't want to I, is challenging, obviously. But I was going to say, um, ca- it, case in it, point right, right. now. <laughs> it, it's, in, it's interesting to talk to people who don't really get interviewed. Yeah. yeah. Like not saying these people are not famous enough to talk to anybody, but people that just go play shows and they have a, uh, you know, they have a fan base, but they don't get to sit down and spend 
20 minutes talking about how they wrote a song or how they got together or their yeah. background. Like it, you can go read it on Wikipedia, but it's not the same as, you know, it, sitting down and somebody saying like, well, I played guitar and this guy played bass and, you know, it's, 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 it's a different thing. Like, I mean, they could sit on their own Facebook profile and they could like make a video yeah. sitting at their desk. Like, and this is why I did this. And did this. and you might have people that are like, ah, like they're going to scroll right past mm. it. But for whatever reason, if you say like, oh, like I appeared on this said right. thing, just that but transition, this, that like structured that environment, environment, structured yeah. environment it, it makes people want to watch. It, but that is a more appealing a, dynamic. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is a huge thing is just like being humbled by the fact that people come in here and not only are excited to be here, but just I, so excited about the experience. I, I can't tell you how many times we've been like, like I've, I think we've all been humbled by like, we meet certain people like, and like, oh, like, oh man, like we're excited, like we're excited to meet yeah. this person, and then they get here and they're like, I'm so excited to meet you guys, and we're like, what? what? <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> right. like <laughs> pump the brakes real quick. Yeah. Like, what? I was not expecting. They're like, yeah, dude, I've been looking forward to this. I this, mean, this so I, I think it's interesting um, when we bring some of these people on. Is that, this your answer? <laughs> well, uh, I th- an add on. I, th- okay. I think it's interesting when we bring some of these people on, like like some radio hosts. Um, that have come here and like sat down and they're like, uh, they're like, I, I, I don't know how to do this. And we're like, what are you talking about? Like, this is a podcast and you're a radio host. Like they, they go hand in hand. And they're like, yeah, but usually I'm on the other side of it. Like I'm giving an interview. I don't get interviewed. Yep. I know um, that feeling. And, and it's funny yeah. because it, it always kind of leaves a takeaway at the end of the day. I'm like, wow, like that's cool it kind of brings me in to pay attention to like mm-hmm. the whole thing in a deeper way than just listening to the conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I think a big part of that also is not that you guys don't have like predetermined questions for some of these, but just kind of like off the cuff questions that just kind of are building the conversation. I we, mean, obviously they're very short mm-hmm. episodes, but being able to just kind of rabbit hole with someone instead of, n- this is not a dig on radio hosts, but instead of having like, I'm going to ask these four questions, I'm going to get an answer from you and I'm going to ask the next question. Yeah. Um, that's why, that's why I like to think of this as more of a podcast and less of an interview where we are interviewing you, but I like to take the podcast approach where it's like, I want to like sit a structured down conversation. Yeah. yeah. But I want to sit down. I want to truly get to know you on this podcast and let my curiosity work its way through the conversation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just the way your brain is going to work too. And and the time the time limit kind of makes it good and bad. You have less time to talk, yeah. but also it keeps you on track of like I need to figure out how I want to talk about this. Yep. I, Rat- I tell you I think that's probably like the biggest thing that like is like it's like the biggest blessing and the biggest curse yeah. with doing this because like it, like you said like if I mean and I'll be honest like there are some episodes where it's like it just it, it was hard to get the content. Yeah. So th- in those situations, it's a blessing. But I will be honest, like it's but more of a curse that more 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 often than not because you're like you get so many good people and you're like I could literally sit here yeah. and talk to you about like entertaining content for three hours. Yep. But we'll cut it short and we'll just we'll reschedule you and bring you back. And yep. it's like so. I mean, again, I guess that's where it's a blessing then. Yeah. So like, but the cool part is not only do we get to hang out and talk to them beforehand, but also after. Yeah. So at least you get to you know get that out and talk and talk to them and ask some questions but it is kind of a shame that you have to do it so quickly on camera i i guess my takeaway uh from the whole thing is uh and also in relation to what i kind of brought up earlier about the relation between the the relation between the 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 doing a podcast and doing like a band or whatever is uh i think when you're creating content in the music world uh, whether it be visual or uh, musical, whatever, I think you create content based on like, this is what I like, right. but this will also fit the puzzle piece of somebody who's thinking like me, right? Yeah. But in a podcast, uh, what I've taken away from this in all of the conversations that we've had and all the awesome people that we got to meet is that the difference there's like a difference and it's very different and it's totally okay and it's awesome but um the difference is you're not creating a content to fit that puzzle piece you're kind of just creating whatever happens 
And like it goes in a million different ways. And it always like gives you more questions than answers. Yeah. And that's I think what I really like about the platform. I like that. And that's what I take away from it more both on camera, what we experience on camera in the interview and off camera. Some of these conversations we've had with people were like I'm learning about like something that I didn't even know existed yeah. or yeah. Yeah. like I don't know. It's or crazy. you really like this group or artist. Right. And never knew, you know, some of the things you just casually talk to them about now. Right. Yeah. I would say my biggest takeaway, maybe takeaways. Yeah. Um <laughs> actually we're conducting the interview. <laughs> <laughs> um one is um just like learning to be grateful and humble like i mean this is something that i i started for fun got you guys all into this we, we started working on it and it turned out great Yeah, because you used you to be like, so pretentious and self-centered i mean really God. was i know right it was this is horrible. my show as i'm sound, like, like saying the most pretentious, <laughs> pretentious and self-centered thing i've ever said but no like getting you guys on it was great and then we like we took this off and or this took off and we just started rolling with it and then like just humble to have the opportunities to have like I'm sorry to get the opportunities that we have had to meet some of our, our favorite bands some huge names out there that people like, live and breathe their name we are the ones that are lucky enough to have the opportunity yeah. to sit down and talk with them for 30 minutes an hour however long I, it just makes me extremely grateful for that um, it just reminds me to be grateful for what you have mm -hmm. um, and then I guess another takeaway which is kind of more of a recent one is um, start this out with like a little bit of a, a funny story so uh most people know that i've been in sales like my whole life and i remember when i was a car salesman we were uh all falling behind on our training like we had like training we had to get done uh it was like a computer training anyways sales manager gets all pissed off calls a quick meeting puts us all in our place so starts yelling at us we have this new sales manager come in and he's like being forced to like try to be tough on us he gave this awesome speech that still sticks to it with me seven years later. He was a diehard Denver Broncos fan. He hated the Patriots, but what he said was, I hate the Patriots, but Tom Brady is probably one of the, if not the best quarterbacks of all time. All right, he's been playing this game for over a decade now, almost two do you think he stops going to training every year? Do you think he stops going to practice? You can always learn more. You can yeah. always be better, even if you are already the greatest there ever is to be. That's a you really can, good analogy, yeah. It, it really was, and that stuck with me forever. And I just like to just kind of kind of, I like to kind of just put that on my life where I am and just look at like where we started mm -hmm. from having zero experience with doing a podcast, zero experience with interviewing, zero experience with uh, questioning and journalism and all that stuff just to where it. we are now <laughs> yeah. and where we're going in the future. Which is like informed winging it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> it's really one know? of his, like, dude, if you'd have told my middle school teacher, uh, middle school English teacher, like, oh, yeah, like, um, I, I, I do journalism, like, yeah. I do broadcast journalism. Oh, yeah. Based on my papers, she would laugh at you. <laughs> like, she would laugh at me. She would laugh at herself because yeah. it, it, it just. It, it I just failed English my junior year. I had to take two English classes yeah. my senior year. And then here we are. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> I just never thought I would be like doing anything. That was certainly like this. a peak. Yeah, it was. But sorry. I don't know. It's yeah. I, I agree. Like it's it, it is. It's very it's very humbling. And it's like we always we do constantly learn though. Like constantly learning, constantly growing, constantly, and that's the best thing. I think that's a lot of. Uh, People make mistakes and people learn and grow from their mistakes, and that's something that I think this a lot of people have forgotten. It's okay to make mistakes as long as you grow from them. And I think I think that's a perfect way to just. I mean, my final piece on this, because I mean, surprise, this is the final episode of season one of the CPMP uh, podcast. So I guess my final piece to say on this is I just want to thank everyone thank who you. came yeah. and yeah. Were, was a part of this because not only. Like it was just a pleasure having you, but like like you said, like thank you for helping me grow because I would have never thought I would have yeah. done like journalism or anything like this. And it's like I, it, and it's really it's nice. Like now, what, like you said, starting at the the bedroom to being here, like people like kind of recognize us for like what we do and like right. what our position is now. Like it's it's very very humbling, and I'm I'm very grateful. So to anyone and everyone that we've ever interacted with and that we've had the pleasure of having on our show like thank you so much for everything yeah. and 
We just we look forward to continuing doing this. As I mean, we could we could go through a shout out list, but it would be way too long. Yeah, way as too far long. as far as guests on here, I mean, there have been specific ones where like I think occasionally you have somebody on where you just go like that actually like changed the yeah. future of what I'm like how I'm going to ask yes. things yes. how like how I expect people to answer it like I'm going to talk to people differently in this and outside of this just because I had this 20 minute conversation with this person yep um but as far as I don't know if anybody else has anything else to say before we <laughs> wrap up Chris is laughing about something I think it's funny uh the people that when we first started doing this um even as late as like whenever you start not that you started yeah, late yeah. but mm-hmm. even after you started I think it's funny the people that we've met and interacted with that have kind of jokingly been like oh so you're podcast nerds <laughs> but like now we're like yeah we we are we are yeah. we are the podcast <laughs> jokes nerds. on you yeah, exactly <laughs> even now it does um, still kind of feel weird to say like it, it is funny yeah, we record a podcast because then people ask a lot of questions. Yeah, oh, every re- time. That's every why time, I, dude. I, I always tried at my previous job to not talk about it heavily because then people start asking questions and they're like, where can I find it? Who do you have on there? So and it's like, and I think I'm it's like, really I want you like I want it. Obviously, I want the views. Obviously, I, I want it to grow like that. I want those people to be interested in it. But it's just weird. For someone you have to interact with every day. It's weirder yeah. when you're the one on camera. Right. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, but. As far as like thank yous and shout outs, obviously Rock Mill. Absolutely. Logan, Hershey. Hershey, all of the guys at the shop, Dylan, everybody that's helped us out that's done a huge part there. Yeah, huge um, thank you. Brett Rudder, John Merckx, Brandon Valentine. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's going to yeah, be a ton. The, there's going to be a ton that we're going to miss. But And I, Central Pennsylvania Music Hall of Fame for yeah, everybody allowing involved. us to do this. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, n- not that this wasn't something we were interested in doing. This is kind of like where Darker with Daniel was kind of headed was like in this like music centered direction. Mm-hmm. But this is definitely a, a step out of the comfort zone and a huge growing point. And I think as we kind of morph back into also recording longer form content mm-hmm. and and doing Dark with Daniel again, I think this is going to be a huge stepping stone. I'm really interested to see that contrast of like the last thing we posted like over a year ago. Yeah. And, yeah. And something we're going to record now. Yeah, um, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So I guess we, we might as well drop in here then um, a teaser. Darker with Daniel is making a comeback. It has been almost officially a year since our last episode. It's in the works. It is coming. Yeah. Um, so if this you have questions not, about this Darker... This is not specifically Hall of Fame endorsed, just to specify. No. Yes. This is just... This podcast is hosted by the Darker with Daniel uh, podcast crew. Right. Um, so if you have... If you're wondering what Darker with Daniel is, we're on YouTube. Everything else CPMB is. We also have a website, darkerwithdaniel.com. Um, there's an episode where I almost die. There's an episode around capsaicin. Eating Caps- spicy food. <laughs> yeah. um, like, yep. And <clears throat> we have a lot of new stuff moving forward. Now, speaking of new stuff moving forward, I don't mean to go full YouTuber, um, but please, any feedback is extremely uh, yep. appreciated. If you have anything you'd like to see from the Central Pennsylvania Music Podcast in the future, please make sure you comment on it. You message us on Facebook, message us on Instagram, yeah. email us, uh, thecpmp at gmail.com, yep. right? Or the, the CPM podcast. The CPM yep. podcast at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Please feel free to reach out to us. There's also course. a request form on the Hall of Fame, the we'll CPMHOF cpmhof.com there's a request form if you want to submit to come on or submit yeah. someone else to come on um yeah and yeah if you want to go on there yeah exactly so the whole questionnaire you fill out a form yep. please come join us we'd love to have you on the show and uh other than that i don't have anything else you guys good yeah i think we're good until next time guys until next uh, time and uh i guess just to quote steve from blues clues thanks for being our friends <laughs> We are here with Devix uh, at Fort Hunter Park. Really excited to have you on here, man. Thank you for giving us your time. Thanks for having me on it, yeah. Of course. So you're performing two sets today, right? Correct. Two sets at the Corn Crib stage, one at one and 
another at 230. Awesome. Awesome. So if you don't know Devix, he was actually a contender on The Voice last season or two? Uh, technically now two seasons ago. They, ju they just ended the season 23. I was on 22. Man, it's crazy how time flies, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I watched a couple of your performances on there. You did, you know, Coldplay. Mm -hmm. um, were those like your favorite band? It was, uh, the Killers, Coldplay, and Kings of Leon. It's kind of its own like niche alternative rock, right? Right, right. I think a, a lot of my background with music came from, you know, adults, alternative, contemporary, that kind of stuff coming out of like the 2000s genre. And then when I started to like, that was like what my family would listen to for the most part. We were still ver pretty versatile, but I picked up my own sense of what I liked. And then it started to be a lot more like folk and indie. And then I, you know, obviously adapt onto pop. So bringing that all together is kind of how we reworked a lot of those songs. But yeah, it was a very alternative driven, um, I guess, set list for the show. Yeah. So, and, and that's, is that what you, I guess you prefer to do is what you're saying? Yeah. 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 I think, um, I mean, my, my genre, I, I would say is kind of a blend. It's such a weird thing because everyone wants to be their own little genre, but it honestly has become like a really cool blend of alternative rock and indie folk. Mm -hmm. and then anything in between so man that's awesome so uh, i know before we started filming here you said you have a new single coming up right yeah yeah june 16th uh, my first single and technically i had one way back when but uh, time goes on is coming out uh, june 16th awesome and what kind of song can we expect from that um i think i, I kind of want to almost put it in like a, a i would say alternative rock meets like dream pop almost okay so a, it's a weird thing i, I say dream because it's very ethereal there's a lot of cool reverbous effects that are just kind of like helping it, you know, swell quite a bit. Um, but it's a really cool like mashup of a lot of the things I've been working on over the years and a lot of um, just just tips and tricks of, of whatever trade comes with music that I've learned then, now. It's it's just this big conglomerate of, of a lot of cool things that I've done with music so far. And it's all in one song, but it's also one part of what's coming, which is a bigger album, so. That's awesome. So we're really looking forward to a new album or a full album. Um, who did you work with on this song? Anybody local here? Or uh, it's you, just me. Just um, you? Yeah, a lot of the, the the funds that I got, I guess, from the show, from The Voice, was uh, money that I didn't want to see go to waste. I was like, I got this opportunity. It's the first time that I've had like a lump sum amount without having to like you know put it aside for a long time. So I just went ahead and invested in studio equipment. Um, I got like a pretty solid rig set up, and a lot of that stuff is software nowadays as opposed yeah. to hardware. Um, so as long as I had the right piece of the hardware, the rest could be done virtually. Um, and we kept that going there. Um, yeah, I, I forgot what I was going to say. No, I distracted no, me. no worries. No, that's cool. So basically, you're producing your own song as well. Correct. Too. Yeah. Have you worked with any other artists on it or just, just truly um, yourself? A friend of mine, Marisa Porter, she's a musician in the York area as well. She's traveled for it quite a bit. Um, I'm working with her on one of her songs. And then I have a couple of producer friends, Matt Fusick's one of them, um, out in Philly area. And he actually used to be my boss at Mention Music. Um, oh. oh, no way. Okay. Yeah, I was working with him on this particular song for a little bit where I would, you know, send it off to him, um, see what he thought about it. And then he was like, I think you could take like this type of approach, this type of approach. He did his own take on it as well, just to kind of get some, you know, some of those ideas into the world to, to be more, you know, audible. Um, and then so I kind of took what I had already mixed with what he was doing and what he had. And we kind of just... We blended it really well, like yeah. right in the between um, with a lot of his idea work coming in on that, too. No, that's great. So I guess coming up uh, in the future for DevX, so you have a single coming out. You said albums in the works. Mm -hmm. uh, any live performances coming up in the future or are you just kind of taking a little hiatus to focus on the album right now? I would love to take a hiatus, but I still got to pay the bills and yeah. like music's all I do. So um, okay. I, I play roughly every week. Um, there's a lot of shows coming up. I can't think off the back right now, uh, um, <laughs> but uh, it can all be seen on devixofficial.com. There's a live tab that shows all of my upcoming shows, um, which is also linked in Bands in Town. Awesome app, awesome thing to use. You can just stay like updated and you know get notifications when your like favorite artists are playing around town and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we'll make sure that we get your information and we'll have that in the description for everybody to check out. Keep up to date with Devix. Real quick, I know you got to get going. You got to go sound check. Uh, I want to ask one question, something we ask a lot of people on the show. What is one of your favorite things about the Central Pennsylvania music community? I think probably versatility. Um, you've seen a lot of walks of earth come, and I think it's it's one of the it's it's kind of like hole in the wall area wise because uh -huh. like it's not like a big big name where it's you know Nashville or, or uh, what, I can't think of anything Los Angeles wherever yeah um, those big big names they kind of like they start to get congested with almost like one type of music sometimes or just just a main few. Mm -hmm. um, here you kind of get a lot of people working from 
different styles, different genres. And I feel like that, that does happen everywhere, but it's a lot more prominent here yes. because of how few and far between you'll find a musician that actually wants to go out gig and, and, and do all these opportunities, like open mics or, or podcasts or anything like that. I feel like we're able to kind of dig in and find the people you probably wouldn't find that are probably hiding somewhere in Philly, somewhere in Los Angeles, somewhere in Miami, you know? Yep. They're very tucked in there because of how prevalent everything else is. We kind of have like a nice even balance for all of it, and it helps us to to dig those guys out a little bit. Yeah, so you would say that's probably what makes our music industry so special here. Probably, yeah. Like, versatility makes it very special just across the board, honestly. Yeah, that's great. Well, DevX, thank you so much for your time, man. thank you. We appreciate you coming on here short notice and get out there and rock it today, man. Sure thing, yeah. And uh, thanks again.